Hello everyone and welcome back to Star Wars Battlefront 2 where I want to do something that I briefly touched upon last time I played this which is I want to go through a dissemination of all the different characters and classes from my many years in this game I mean I, I bought this game when it came out back in 2005 so trust me I know it a little bit and I just wanted to talk about some of the different classes, factions and stuff like that so when I actually sit down and go Man, the Heavy Trooper's rocket's crap compared to the Droid Trooper's rocket. Or the, or the Marksman rifle on the Republic Marksman is way better than the Clone Marksman. You will know what the bollocks I'm talking about. So first off, let us start with the standard Clone Trooper. Now this is probably, probably the best in um, terms of the Assault class. Now, in terms of classes, everyone gets the same weapon. So you get three grenades, you get a blaster rifle, 200 shots. Right, nothing out of the normal with that. However... The strength of the um, clone blaster is, of course, the hitbox, um, the range, and accuracy. So if you look at this, see, far distance, basically just get him in the center cross here, and you can deal with him. It's fairly simple and easy, you know, definitely a good thing. The zoom, zoom isn't nothing to be, you know, sneezed at either. As you can see, get pretty consistent sort of range. Hitbox is a little, you know, a little bit off, and it's probably better just to not bother scoping in. This is the classic old school style before you needed to scope in for everything. Now, blaster pistol. I definitely think the Republic blaster is probably one of the weakest. They both have the similar sort of recharge rate, but I think the hitbox, from my experience, of the Republic blaster is just not quite as good as, say, the Re Rebellion's um, blaster pistol. Takes about mm, one full overcharge to kill someone if you're landing consistent body shots, which is what I'm not doing. So yeah, that's the standard sort of clone trooper. Definitely, probably my favourite, I think. Uh, now going into the heavy trooper. Now I must admit, I ain't the biggest fan of the Republic heavy trooper. Wow, it doesn't even give me my ammo. What an asshole. Now as I said, heavy troopers in general, I think, are very lacked down by the fact that they're rockets have bugger all splash damage, incredibly slow, and recharge rate. Uh, see, I managed to kill that guy, but many times I've actually fired rockets at infantry and they've struck them off. Unless you land them directly at their feet to get blast damage, even with which it's, again, you see like that, it's kind of, see, the blast radius is so limited that it's kind of useless against infantry. Whereas a lot of games, the rockets will have really good AOE damage, which you can use to your best effect. Alright, so, mines, again, mines are not really, you know, anything to sneeze at. Good for useful situations, good against AI, but, again, the mines are pretty universal. There's no faction that has, you know, upgraded mines over the other. Ah, right, we shall get some ammunition, and... Move on to the next class. So I definitely think the Republic Heavy Trooper, not the worst, but not the best. Actually, no. I'll be honest, I think the Republic Heavy Trooper is probably the worst in this game. Now, Marksman. Now, again, Marksman Rifle is a very interesting thing because, um, as you can see, there's no actual hitbox, which encourages you to scope in. However, if you're good... Um, which I'm not with this rifle because it's slightly off, you can actually um, just hit fire. It does really good damage. So, yeah, as again, um, Republic Trooper, rifle, pistol, auto turret, something the people seem to always neglect about, but it's fairly useful when you can use it. Um, definitely not a fight winner, but it's good for stalling and buying some time, I would say. Uh, also, it's kind of funny that the game glitches a little bit and you can see some of the hitbox um, from time to time. Eh. Alright. Now, moving on. Engineer. I think, um, again, Clone Engineer, because it uses the same um, model um, as the uh, Clone Blaster Rifle, there's a bit of universality in terms of um, where you're actually sort of using the aim down. So it's kind of, I think it's kind of a bit of cross-universal um, 
appeal in terms of that. No, I'm not playing as Yoda. I will get into the hero dissemination another time. Ah. But again, yeah, the clone rifle, um, shotgun, you can see the hitbox. You can see how, when I, as I'm firing it, that the spread is different every time, but it's pretty universal in terms of how many um, pellets will end up in the middle versus the flanks. You can see kind of the what I'm going for there. Also, basically, if you're shooting at this range, you're kind of wasting your time. It's a point-blank weapon only, and even then, you kind of got to be right up in their face to get any consistent damage out of it. But the advantage, again, of all of the engineer classes, because they can dump down health and ammo, you can basically keep yourself alive um, while enemies are shooting at you. Again, fusion cutter, good for defenses, but sometimes it would be nice to have a pistol. Debt pack, I mean, you can see right there. I mean, the hitbox um, of the explosive did nothing. Good for planning against tanks and blowing up, but if you're trying to kill infantry with it, they basically have to be walking on it like a landmine for you to get anywhere. Nice, alright. We shall now move on to the special classes. Now, the special classes are kind of um, what differentiate each of the races. Now, the clone commander. Um, Blaster pistol, remote droid, and minigun. Now, the reason you want to be playing the clone commander is for the minigun. Blaster pistol, nah, eh, that's just, you know, it is a blaster pistol. The, uh, up that way, please. The rally defense increase, it's good to pop it in a fight when you're in a group of enemies, but it's not going to be a game changer at all. Now, the minigun has a bit of a high overheating problem, but... It's good for consistent damage, and it's great for counteracting droidica shields, because you can just pummel them and get rid of them that way. Probably one of the main advantages of the minigun in itself. However, as you can see, it's sort of accurate, but not really. you kind of got to place your shots. So again, it's better for just targeting close-range groups of enemies or you know, ripping off droidica shields. Now, the recon droid. Again, I a lot of people can use this, but I never liked it or saw, saw the appeal. The advantage of it is it's small, which means it's easy to um, fly around and you know won't get immediately sniped. Blaster, basically not really great damage, but you know good for annoying enemies and distracting them. And the suicide ability, again, it's worse than a grenade. You ain't gonna be getting much out of that. You can see with the damage on the minigun, um, it pumps enough and enough, pumps out enough shots that you can even, you know, annoy vehicles with it. But definitely don't be tank hunting with this thing. Let me just kill this metal prick. Yeah, yeah, whatever. All right, reload the minigun. Now the most fun class, which I am probably the worst at for the Republic, is the jet trooper. Now, on paper, this thing seems like it would be incredibly powerful. It has an AOE two-shot grenade launcher, which doesn't have an arc. So basically, you can see it doesn't have a grenade arc. It just fires in a straight line, meaning it's good for just blowing up that one asshole in front of you. You can hunt vehicles with it, but it's great for just, you know, again, as you see what I'm doing, flying up. Um, strategically targeting one asshole. Now, the problem on the paper is the grenade launcher itself doesn't do a lot of damage against vehicles. It's primarily targeted for taking out that singular asshole um, infantry soldier. Nice. So you can see it's kind of not that great. Two grenades? Not too many. The strength of this class is the jetpack, which Again, is the mixed results. You can either be really amazing with the jetpack, you know, know how to get around, know the jump angles and trajectories, or it will just leave you flying in the air as a walking pinata. My philosophy for the jetpack is use it to boost yourself away from fights, 
and definitely don't rely on it to save you because it will not do so. Alright, so you can see that's kind of like, we'll use this uh, Magna Guard as an example, if my jetpack would ever recharge. Oh yes, that's a good reminder, always keep an eye on your jetpack's recharge rate, guys. Uh, because there's nothing worse than being in the middle of your flight arc and it cutting out and you landing in front of an enemy tank. Uh, oh, something else I should definitely point out about the um, jetpack, which we will hopefully be able to get to once we kill this asshole. Uh, come on, damn it. I want to actually physically show you it rather than explain it, but when you get the jetpack, actually, is there enemy? Their flag is there. Um, with jet troopers, your jetpack is disabled if you capture any flag or objective. Good for balance, but man, is it if you're not used to it and you're cut off without your jetpack, then you're gonna be walking. So I definitely recommend uh, if you're trying to cap objectives and you want to use the Jet Trooper. Remember, the Jet Trooper will get you to the objective, but it definitely will not get you out. Um, this is also the same with Force... Uh, some Force Powers, actually. I think the um, Force Super Jump is actually cut out when you grab the flag. Which, again, is good for balance, but it is mildly annoying um, as well. Bollocks. Alright, so that's my kind of disassimulation of the um, Republic. Uh, can I not swap over teams in the middle of battle? You can in Conquest. Ah, here we go. Alright, let's just go on to the droids now. Now, <sighs> the Super Battle Droid. I hate the Super Battle Droid. It is... I cannot play Super Battle Droids. And I think it's because it doesn't have a gun. Hitbox isn't too bad. Um, the, as you can see from the blaster fire, it's actually a slightly slower rate of fire than a Republic blaster. Um, it does a little bit more damage to my mind, but as you can see, it takes a while to charge up. The strength of this class, again, is the wrist rocket. Unlike the traditional grenades used by every other faction, like the jet trooper rocket, it... F um, fires in a straight line. It has no AOE to speak of, so <laughs> firing it into crowds, you'll, you'll kill someone, but you ain't going to kill a lot of people. Now, the other sh um, advantage is, instead of a pistol, it gets a tri-shot, which is in the combination of a pistol and shotgun. Very criminally underused. A lot of people don't um, even think of using it, which is understandable, um, because it, again, a pistol, I could hit at that range. This gun, I need to be basically right up in their face. Um, but, again, as you can see by the damage, two free shot kill at close range. So, definitely if you're in a close range situation and you need it, feel free to call upon the um, free shot pistol. But as you can see, has slightly better damage than the like clone blasters, but it compensates for that by with a slower rate of fire. Also, remember these are all my personal subjective opinions. It, you could crack the game code and find out I'm be talking bollocks this whole time, but this is just how I feel from oh, too too many hours playing this game, in a good way. All right, we shall change over classes. Uh, can we do that while touching the flag? I really hope we can. Yes, we can. Right, Assault Droid. Now, Assault Droid. Again, same sort of loadout as the Republic Troopers. Um, again, the pistol. You can see how it, it has a slower rate of fire than the Republic pistols. However, again, I'm fairly certain it compensates for that by having a little bit better damage. Yeah, it has better damage. Rocket Launcher. Um... Again, not too bad at all. Fires a purple rocket. Um, isn't too much different. I personally think it looks a bit cooler, and I swear it does a little bit more damage to tanks, but that might just be my delusional imagination. Again, landmines, good for covering your retreat or a choke point. You know, fairly saucy. You know, can't complain about it. 
Now let's just fire at this tank, bit of friendly fire. You can see it doesn't, you know, it's not too bad in terms of that. Um, AOE, again, as you can see, it will fire just off to the right here of this guy. It does bugger all AOE. That's basically the standard of all the rockets. It's kind of weird because I honestly think the rocket launcher should have um, substantial fla splash damage, but eh, what do I know? Alright. Uh, apologies. Um, again, as I said, this isn't a modern shooter, so I actually have to go back to the spawns as spawn points to change classes every time I want to do this. Oof. Again, as you can see, rocket it doesn't do too much to tanks. I think it's a little better than the Republic Rocket, but again, that might be my illusion. Now, the Assassin Droid. Again, same sort of thing. Six, seven, eight, eight shots and you need to reload. I find that interesting because some of the um, rifles, you can only use five or six. Uh, again, basically, you have no hitbox unless you zoom it in. You know, standard sort of stuff. Um, as you can see, I'm a little bit better with this um, sniper rifle as opposed to some of the other sniper rifles the other factions has, pro which probably leads to my fondness of it. But you can tell by the hitbox, it isn't too bad. Also, I always find it amusing when you actually do get the hitbox from time to time. But, as you can see... If you're basically just following the rifle barrel itself, you can actually no-scope fairly effectively. See? Just like that. So, I definitely think the droid rifle, in terms of its high magazine, um, decent rate of fire, and fairly generous hitbox, I think it's probably the better of the two sniper rifles when compared to the clone one. No, I hopefully the enemy doesn't win before I get this bloody talk underway. Right. Now we shall... No, I don't want to talk to Django Fett. Oh, bollocks. <sighs> I'm going to probably have to do some editing in this video. I didn't want to, but the bloody enemy are not playing ball. Kill me. Kill me. I want to explain about how the special classes of the droids work. Thank you. Alright. Oh, cut the engineer. Again, engineer. Same sort of loadout. Advantage again is keeping you alive. If you look at the shotgun, again you can see same sort of number of pallets. They all you know, will scatter inside your reticle. Ugh. Again, trying to snipe at long range with this thing is, I mean, you may as well be firing at the moon. Uh, good at close range, but definitely don't rely on the shotgun. Ha! I find that funny. Nice. So yeah, you know, clone droid shotguns, not too bad, I mean... I don't mind it at all. I think the clone um, shotgun's a little better. Probably because it shares the same um, clan tag, not clan tag, character model as the rifle. Which means you kind of, if you know the hitbox on one, and you've got an idea of how to handle um, one of them, you can kind of figure out the other one not too difficultly. Now, the special classes. This is where we get to the fun times. Magna Garb. If this, these rockets had splash damage, this would probably be the best special class in the game. Unfortunately, while a 8-shot semi-automatic rocket launcher pistol sounds metal, and it is metal, the lack of uh, AOE damage means you basically need to nail body shots, which isn't ideal at all under any circumstances. Uh, as you can see, the high rate of fire, though, and the large magazine is what compensates for this loss. So, basically, if you got a tank or something coming around, didn't mean to do that. Oh, well, I... wow. Thanks, me. As I was saying, high rate of fire, large magazine, 
basically compensates for this. So hit it against tanks or infantry in groups. And don't be afraid to spam it, because while it doesn't have good splash damage, it still has some splash damage. Other advantage is Neuro Poison. Basically, this will cause a damage over time effect to enemies um, within its radius. So it's good for a horde. Now, the other weapon it's got, as I'm using here, is the Grenade Launcher. Now, you can hold it and charge it to send it further and have it do more damage. But personally, that's the worst way to use it. You basically just want to be chucking off grenades. Now these grenades actually do decent splash damage, so against hordes, this is the go-to weapon. See, does pretty de decent splash damage, causes good ragdoll, definitely where you want to be going for. So this is definitely one of the stronger special classes, but it's let down by the lack of splash damage on its primary weapon. But that is compensated with the splash damage on a secondary weapon. Now, the most interesting class. The one that will cause either severe rage um, or severe laughs. Droidica. Now, on paper, twin repeating blasters. Now, as you can see, you can just keep firing for a while. And it has a really good recharge rate. Now, going if you go crouch, that will roll you up into ball form, which will get you across the battlefield faster uh, because the slow normal speed is awful now secondary weapon of this is activating its shield now the shield depending on how you use it will keep you alive through everything but again as I said um, with the clone like command of minigun or being targeted by multiple grenades and rockets or even the beam cannon up there will shred your shield fast my philosophy for using the shield is on and off Turn it on when you're directly engaging an enemy. Turn it off when you ain't to give it time to recharge. That way you maximize your um, amount of shield damage and keep yourself alive. Because as you can see, when I was targeted by the enemy, the shield went off fairly quickly. And without your shield, you're dead. Uh, if you know how to counter it, then droidicas can go down like chumps. If you don't, or if the AI is being a bit of a douche that morning, then... The droidica is going to cause unknowable amounts of rage. Uh, remember the slow movement speed is a real bit of a hassle and it does mean if you're getting directly targeted you're gonna die. Uh, actually perfect timing. So in terms of classes I would say Republic have the stronger, um, stronger trooper, engineer, um, and Commander, I would say the droids have the better Marksman Heavy Trooper. And in terms of specials, it's kind of what you know. As I said, the Magna Guard can be good if you counteract the limitations of its weapons. The droid can be, can be amazing if you know how to play it. Jet Trooper, good if you, again, the Jet Trooper is good if you play it right, but I think it's definitely the weakest of those four. Alright. Moving on to the Rebels. I will try and make this faster this time. Now, Rebel Trooper. You can see it has a slightly different rate of fire. And it does a little bit more damage than um, like the Clone Blaster. Definitely the advantage in there. I would say the, the firepower is definitely good. Zooming in. Ugh, ugly. Just... Hip fire is the way it was intended. Again, blaster pistol and grenades. Now, I actually need to do a double take, but I'm fairly confident that the blaster pistol is actually definitely stronger and definitely more preferable in terms of damage than it is um, the Imperial blaster. It also looks cooler, but that's just, you know, by the by. Alright. Hold still. Yeah, again, over... Yeah, as I said, I'll need to fully test it, but I'm, I'm of the belief that the um, Rebel Blaster is definitely the best blaster out of all four factions, because it seems to do a bit more damage, and again, you can fire it a little longer, I think one shot longer before it overheats. But the strength is definitely the Blaster Rifle, which again, you can see has a decent hitbox, can be used even at medium to long ranges fairly consistently and effectively. You can see I'm hitting the tank 
and getting damage on it even from here. Ow. Thank you, Stormtrooper, you dick. Alright, Vanguard Trooper. Now, I'm not a big fan of the Rebel Vanguard Trooper. One, because the rocket launcher glitches, which is ugly, but also, again, the lack of adequate splash damage really discounts a lot of the heavy trooper classes in this game from being as effective as they should. Now, let's try and... Again, you can see the inaccuracy in the rocket launcher. Like, it shoots way high above target. And I'm fairly sure it's the uh, one of the only rocket launchers that actually consistently does that. Yeah, so, again, blah, grenades, good for holding out situations. Landmines, I mean, landmines can always come in handy if you're being a douchebag and want to camp the spawn like that. Uh, pistol, let's get a proper test now. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine reasonably consistent body shots. Thank you. And I'm gonna just gonna run that test again. Now the marksman. I happen to think the rebel marksman is probably the um, better of the two. It might be because I know the hitbox of the sniper rifle again. I think the droid um, sniper rifle because the blaster is actually green not green purple it's fairly easily identifiable so it's kind of you can't really box it up and you know where you're shooting even when you're hip firing however as you can see the sniper rifle at long range two shot kill body shot one shot kill headshots um, fairly good damage again auto turret good for covering your back and keeping things um, interesting pistol Basically just the emergency fallback. If you're good enough, basically you'll be using your rifle, even in close range situations. Uh, again, I think the um, Rebel rifle is probably a little bit better. As you can see, one, two. Slower rate of fire than, say, the droid rifle. Again, eight shot magazine as opposed to the nine shot magazine of the droid sniper rifle. Now, yeah. alright. Moving on. Smuggler. Now, this is definitely my least favorite of the engineer classes. Um, the shotgun... I don't know. Maybe it's... Again, a lot of this might be in my head because they are basically the same. They all have the same weapons, except for the special classes. But I seem to think that the rebel shotgun is actually shorter range than a lot of the others. I've never had a lot of fun using um, the Rebel Engineer. Again, it might just be the hitbox, but as you can see, same sort of thing. Fires the pellets within the um, circle. Basically, you need to be touching their skin cells to get any damage. Which, eh, for some you can play like that, but I personally don't. Again, debt pack. Worthless AOE, basically just tank hunt with it really all right special classes now boffin spy is a class that some people you will either know and really use or you will despise now the primary strength of this class is stealth turns you completely invisible uh, there's still a little bit of a shimmer outline so competent players will still be able to see you see this guy kind of knows I'm around but he's having trouble actually figuring out where I am. Secondary weapon, the incinerator. Uses the same hitbox and mechanics as the flamethrower from some of the special classes. Basically, it's great for chucking in a room or one-on-one -on -one enemy situation. But, again, it has absolutely no range. So, you're better off kind of going invisible, hiding around behind a corner, being a dick, than sneaking up and blasting them as they come by the other ability it has he has is regeneration which is good for keeping you alive in a tight spot so we will hmm. well I guess I'm not quite sure how to use it the other ability is time bombs now time bombs 
uh, definitely do way more damage and have a way better blast radius as you can see um, than rockets, jet packs or grenades. So these things are great in terms of blowing up turrets or even tank hunting. Disadvantage is the 3 second fuse. While it is good for you, because it can get you out of the way, it's also a disadvantage because if someone sees it and you're playing against players, then they know they got 3 seconds to get the smeg out of there. Alright, we'll just chuck one of these on this turret. Give you an idea of the damage. Again, see it basically almost completely destroyed the turret one by itself. Uh, so, definitely boff and spy. Good for your sneaky um, stealth player dirtbag. But definitely in my least favourite of these two classes because I just ugh, can't get it into my brain. And the inconsistent damage and no range of the incinerator, its you know, primary gun, is just ugh. Bowcaster on the Wookiee Warrior. Alright, Wookiee Warrior again. Seems similar to the Magna Guard in terms of primary weapon backed up with grenade, remote droid, and um, frag grenades. Now, the interesting thing with the Bowcaster is it plays kind of like a shotgun, except, as you can tell, the spread is always in the same flat line, which means if you're going up against regiments of infantry, and they're all in nice ordered lines, you can basically just blast them from range. The individual pellets themselves do about the same damage as a shotgun, maybe slightly more, but the strength is the pellets are actually clustered together, so if you point blank range someone, you're basically going to be able to instant kill them with one solid shot. That is the advantage of the uh, Wookiee in terms of its primary armament. Again, as I said, you basically need to be touching your skin, the enemy's skin cell to get a good idea of how to, to use it so much. Back up again, grenade launcher, same sort of thing. can charge up shots and fire it. Um, depending on how many, or you can just chuck a grenade out. Chucking a grenade out basically is the equivalent of a frag grenade. Again, as you can see, meh, not the greatest damage, but the consistent arcs mean you can kind of just sort of spam enemies from range, and if you need to be more saucy, chuck a fully charged grenade out there and give it a go. Frag grenades, again, frag grenades are always universal sort of decent weapons. Uh, Bowcaster, as you can see, shooting at that range is kind of worthless. Uh, you kind of want to be uh, up against their skin cells to be firing them effectively. Alright, let us go to... Cool. The Sto Imperial side. Now, Stormtrooper. Short blast rifle, as you can see immediately. Advantage. High rate of fire. And um, if you play the campaign, you'll definitely get a lot of practice on how to use it. 50 round magazine, basically you can just keep on firing, dump the mag as you go, not need to worry about it so much. Pistol, slow rate of fire, like really chronically slow rate of fire. Definitely my least favorite pistol out of all of them, so let's actually try it. One... Well, you're not really a good count. I need someone full health. You. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Again, 9 damage to kill, so my theory was rebunked, but no matter. Uh, again, advantage of the blaster rifle. Just fire. Just keep firing, guys. You don't need to worry about ammo um, count so much. 50 round magazine for all blaster rifles. And again, the high rate of fire of this gun compared to, say, the Rebel Blast Rifle means while you might not be doing as much damage per shot, throwing more of them out there is definitely going to increase your chances of killing the enemy. Alright. Ammo, please. Ali up. Alright. Now, by the way, I ain't going to um, jump into vehicles. I might do that another time. Now, Scout Trooper. Again, Rocket Launcher. The rocket launch is green, the rocket itself is green, which is nice, you know, gives you an accurate idea of where you're firing. Again, landmines and blaster pistol. Mm, where are the rebels? Ah, again, 
See, you basically need to get a direct body shot. If we try and go for a... Oh, I wasn't meaning to do that. But basically you need to hit them or hit them on the legs. Hitting them on the legs is actually probably the best way to get consistent damage of any of the rocket launchers. Again, as you can see, I think this rocket launcher is probably a bit better than the um, Rebel rocket launcher. As you can see, unlike the Rebel rocket launcher, this actually follows the hitbox. It doesn't fire up for no reason. So, you know, go nuts with that. Remember, the, probably because the weapons themselves are basically you get the same loadout with each class, and it's only subtle variations of damage versus rate of fire. Uh, and hitboxes, it's a real good idea to memorize the hitboxes because that gives you probably the best idea of what you're working with. Scout Trooper! Alright. Again, green rifle, good for that. As you can see, hitbox ain't too bad, so you can actually do quite a good amount of no scoping if you get the hitboxes right. Zoom in, fire as normal. I... While I prefer the um, Rebel Marksman Rifle, I think if you're new to this game and you want to try and learn no scoping, this is probably the better rifle to learn with over the two, because the green shots actually gives you an idea of where you're hitting or missing, so you can adjust your aim as such. Uh, again, blast a pistol, auto turret, keep things, you know, off your back. Uh, engineer. Again, same sort of model as the sh um, shotgun, as the blast rifle. Again, you can tell the scatter shot um, amount of blasts that are going on in the actual barrel, which again gets wider or more wacky as you shoot longer range. Uh, Debt pack. Again, I mean, why are you even trying with this bloody thing? Uh, but I definitely prefer this shotgun over to the Oh, perfect example. If you look, when they turn invisible, you can see the faint shine. And if you're careful in how you're looking out for it, you can actually um, see the shine. Yes, thank you, Imperial Command. You can actually see the shine of where the bottom spy is. So it's kind of, if you know it, you're good at, with it, but if you're not, you're not. Again, the health and ammo thing, while... It is for, you know, prioritizing keeping your friends alive. Let's everyone be honest. The best advantage is you can just chuck it down, step over it, and away you go. See? When they turn fully invisible, they are invisible, but there is that little lag between them turning on the invisibility and them actually being fully visible, which is when you can usually get them. Because they won't have a primary weapon of which to defend themselves with. Alright, uh, now we need to get on through the special classes. So, tank, please murder me so I can explain. Seriously, there are two tanks. I'm standing here like a moron. Just thank you. Oh, I didn't really realize I had the flag. Alright, Imperial Officer. Now, again, Recon Droid. That's just standard. Everyone gets it. It ain't that, oh, it ain't that grand. Now, it would seem on paper, you get a Geonosi and a Sonic Pistol, which you think would be amazing for splash damage. It is and it isn't. It's inconsistent splash damage at best. You're probably better off um, firing this directly at someone, because if you can see, shooting at his feet, there is no splash damage. You basically need to land body shots to get damage, like that. Uh, good for firing into a room with a crowd, and it's good against PvP, well, if you're actually dueling other players in this game, because the size and the length of the blast itself uh, tends to put people off and think it's doing a lot more damage than it is. If you're really wanting to damage the enemies, Again, going back to the other classes, consistent thing is the grenade launcher. Don't worry about charging it. Charging it is only for if you're trying to play with tanks or you're going for those long range shots. Otherwise, just get the blasts out as fast as you can. 
Imperial Officer, I'd rate it above Both and Spy. But again, you're relying on the Mortar Launcher for a lot of your work. Now, Dark Trooper. Now, this is interesting. Because you don't get any... You don't get a fancy um, auto grenade rocket launcher. You get your jetpack, which is excellent for f um, fast maneuverability. Um, keep you out of trouble. See, look at that. Just zoom around the map. Pistol's good. Um, standard sort of thing. How Now, the main gun of this class is where it gets spicy. Because... Wait for it. It's a lightning gun. Um, which gets more powerful the more you charge it. And it arcs more the more you charge it. So, the... Oh, probably... It doesn't actually do any damage to there, but... Firing it once will probably shock the enemy in front of you. Maybe a third of their health. But actually taking the time to charge it up and fire it... Increases the range, damage, and how much it arcs to other people. In a crowded room, if you can pull off the charged shot, it will devastate that room of enemies. The problem is you need a bit of time to charge it, which you're not usually going to have um, if you're coming into a firefight. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of... Uh, that's way too long. Unless you're hiding around the corner, and you can creep around the corner into the middle of the firefight to fire it off, it ain't going to do you too much good. It's only good against infantry. Firing against anyone else is, you know, any vehicles, buildings, or defenses, it's worthless. So it's much better to kind of jetpack into, jetpack as your charger, as you're flying, land blast. So let's just give this a, let's just hypothetically say there's a group of enemies over there. So charge it, fly down into the group of enemies, blast it. And then if you've got enough jetpack juice, it's usually a better idea to charge away. Um, more common thing I tend to use this class for is... Wait for that. Charge it in and pitch grenades. Thank you, Barricade, for blocking me. But basically, jetpack in, pitch a million grenades, get out. You're likely to do better, more consistent damage, get more kills, and stay out of the way if you do it like that. Alright. We shall now move over to the next map. Uh, oh, that requires us winning. Damn, I'm... Ah. Alright, I'm going to cut this out. I was about to cut this out, but then I realised, oh crap, I've actually covered all the classes, haven't I? So yeah, those are the four classes. Um, if you like this idea, I need to actually refine it a little bit. This was kind of a rough prototype of how I wanted this video to go. But I will might refine the process and actually do it again for spaceship combat, vehicles, and heroes. Just give you my personal insights on what's the best vehicles, what's the worst vehicles sort of thing. I will give you an example. The IFT is definitely better than the bloody Rebel one. And that's a spoiler alert. Um, guns do count, guys. Rockets are pretty inconsistent. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's all from me, lads. I hope you appreciate this dissemination. I know it's not the traditional gameplay sort of thing, but I kind of wanted to explain a lot of my tactical decisions and stuff when I play this game. So yeah, that's all from me. I shall say adios, and remember, learn the hitboxes, and learn what classes you want to specialize in. Alright, farewell.